When you need to verify that handwritten or reused VHDL or Verilog works as intended in your system level context, you can use HDL Verifier to co-simulate it running in your Questa or Incisive simulator in coordination with Simulink. I will illustrate by importing a VHDL Cortic implementation of sine cosine and compare it to a reference model. To get started, type cosim wizard at the MATLAB prompt. The wizard will walk you through the steps. In the first step, you just specify which simulator you want to co-simulate with, and it's much easier if it's on your system path, otherwise you can specify the path to it here. Then you load in your HDL files. The wizard will try to determine if they are Verilog or VHDL based on the file name extension so it can issue the proper compilation commands. And when I click Next, it shows the compilation commands it will send to my simulator. You can edit these if you want, but I have no need to. So when I click Next, it will execute this script, which basically parses the VHDL files, determines the compilation order, and what my module names are. Now you can see all the modules. I want to import Cortic as the top. Here we can pass in simulator options, and I'll leave those alone. And you can specify how you want the Simulink and simulator processes to communicate via shared memory, which is faster but allows for only one instance of the simulator to connect to Simulink, or via socket connection, which gives you the flexibility to run on a different host but has more communication overhead. So I'll just use shared memory. And this builds the simulation snapshot, and now we have our port mappings. These are automatically populated, but you can edit them if you need to. In this case, everything looks fine, so I can just go to the next step, which is setting the sample times of the output ports. Now here's where things can get tricky. Because Simulink doesn't know what's going on inside the design that's running in the simulator, it can't automatically propagate sample times and data types to the outputs. So first I specify my output data types, then the sample times for the output. The default that's assigned here is 1 which is fine for a lot of designs where the sample rate in and out of the design is 1, but if we look at this design, the sample rate at the input and output is 0.125. Rather than adjust our Simulink design so the sample rates at the boundaries are 1, we can just specify right here that they should be 0.125. Now Simulink sample time units by default are seconds, but on an FPGA or ASIC, which operate at speeds of hundreds of megahertz and up, the units are typically nanoseconds. So here I'm saying to operate with a 10 nanosecond clock period. In other words, I'm going to clock the simulation of my FPGA at 100 megahertz. That means the FPGA can accept a sample 100 million times per second, which is plenty fast enough to process the incoming data. The next step lets you specify when to start the co-simulation, and the default here is after the hardware comes out of reset, which is fine because our Simulink model doesn't even account for reset. This final step maps the timescales between the two simulation engines. A lot of folks that design their Simulink models with hardware in mind will map one Simulink sample rate to one nanosecond to keep it straightforward, and you can specify that here, but since my design didn't do that, I will leave it on automatically determine, which will determine the right mapping the first time we run the COSIM model. At this point, HDL Verifier generates the co-simulation block along with some callbacks for you to compile a design and start your simulator. So I brought these into my Simulink design and connected everything. And you'll notice there are extra clock enable ports. I'm not going to bother simulating anything with them, so I terminated the output and tied the clock enable in to 1. Be sure to set the sample time and set the data type to Boolean because that's a 1-bit signal. And the output is compared to a reference model and displayed in a scope. Double-clicking the Compile button kicks off a batch compilation of the VHDL code. Of course, we've already compiled it during the setup, so we can go straight to starting the simulator in COSIM mode by double-clicking on that block. It's important to start the simulator this way for it to be connected to this Simulink instance. And at this point, I can just control simulation from Simulink. Now remember, we told the tool to figure out the timescale mapping at the beginning of simulation. Well, here we are. Basically, we want to make sure that one sample time in Simulink, 0.125 seconds, maps to the equivalent of one sample time in the simulator, which is our clock period of 10 nanoseconds. That's already mapped correctly in the table, but changing the HDL time units to nanoseconds really highlights how inefficient this simulation will be. The clock period samples every 10 nanoseconds, yet the data is only changing every 125 million nanoseconds. This means the simulator will clock the chip 12.5 million times for every data sample from Simulink, 
we're tracing waveforms here, so that amount of clocking is going to really slow down simulation. So this table lets me go in and adjust the data rate ratio to something more reasonable. And then now I can kick off the co-simulation, and you can see in the scope that we got the correct results. So hopefully this helps with understanding how to import handwritten or legacy HDL code into a Simulink simulation and dealing with mapping the different notions of timing between the two.